Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu wa ambi abur muslimin. Allahumma salli ala sayidina wa harifati lima khuliq wal khatli lima sabak. Nasir al haq bi haq wa hadil asrat al mustaqim wa ala alihi haqdaril azim. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh everyone wherever you are. We pray that you are in good health, well-being and insyaallah in good iman. May Allah ease our fears and suffice our need. Amin. Insyaallah. Uh, welcome once again to the online program in Rabi Awal uh, at Sau Ilahi, uh, one of the blessed night. And uh, tonight is the tenth night, two nights before Rabi Awal, the twelfth Rabi Awal. Inshallah, may Allah make us reach it, the the day itself, the blessed Amen. day itself. So, Amila, tonight we have uh, a special guest, uh, beautiful stars uh, who I know for quite long time also since he was with. Since uh, he's been an imam at Masjid Taqwa, and uh, seeing that uh, he's been uh, learning and teaching, inshallah, may Allah preserve uh, Ustaz Najib Ahmad, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, Ustaz is going to talk about uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hearts of Quran. As we know, uh, we receive or we even able to read the Quran uh, through the Sahaba and also all those scholars throughout the chain but it is from directly from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but at the same time also we learn from Sayyidatina Aisha the Prophet's wife when she was asked how is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home and she replied he is walking Quran right the akhlaq of Quran so today we want to learn how do we achieve that and why is it so important to be in in that particular manner because Prophet himself said that I was sent to perfect even the akhlaq, you know. So, uh, Ustaz Ahmad Najib, uh, still an imam at uh, Masjid Taqwa since 2012. So, I think many of us see him on every Thursday night or any majlis at the masjid, mashallah. Always smile and serve the community, you know, with an open heart, mashallah. And he also studied in Egypt uh, from 2007 and 2002 till 2011, uh, Sharia Islamia Bachelor Degree. Allah Allah. So without further ado, we like to welcome him and because we want to learn so much from him. <laughs> and uh, you can also send a question to me, uh, 906-87106 pertaining to tonight's question. I repeat the relevance of it because if not, we were not going to ask to start, right? I think to be fair is the topic tonight. Right, so we start. Tafadal, Inshallah. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Alz Billahi min al-Shaytan rajim. Smilla Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa zid wa karim. Ala Sayyidina wa Maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Qala Rabbi shahli sadri wa silli amri wa hlul aqdat min lisan yafqa qawli. إلهنا أنت مقصودنا ولضاك مطلوبنا أعطنا محبتك ومعرفتك brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته حمد لله I'm actually quite honoured or very honoured that the uh, team of Saud Ilahi uh, including uh, Abang Khalid eh, by the Khalid to invite uh, in this uh, special occasion in celebrating the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we are in the month of Rabi'ul Awal, uh, the beautiful month whereby it is recommended for us to remind ourselves of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, to remember him, to know about him, to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously, as Muslims, we need to know who is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But more importantly, is for us to ask ourselves, uh, who is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to us? Uh, where is the Prophet Sallallahu in our hearts? Uh, so that is a very important question that we need to ask ourselves, not to ask others, uh, for me to ask myself, where is the Prophet Sallallahu uh, is? Is he in our hearts? Uh, is he bringing you closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? So these are very important questions as Muslims that we need to always uh, make a reflection or muhasaba, whereby uh, he becomes a priority, uh, the first priority for us uh, to, to always be in our lives, to always be in our hearts. As we know, brothers and sisters, something that 
that is within our hearts that stays with with, with uh, within our hearts uh, it it has a lot of control in ourselves in our actions in our intentions in our goals inspirations so yeah in our lives obviously we have something uh, that stays in our hearts and hopefully that that something is rasulullah sallallahu because why because he brings us to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the main goal that is our, the true meaning of success for a muslim for someone who is uh, submitting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the ultimate success that we we want to be successful like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so who better to be uh, an example for us in our lives uh, than the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we all know one of the uh, most effective ways for us to be successful in life to actually uh, set an example or sorry to follow an example of someone who has already succeeded uh, so obviously the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has succeeded uh, in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of creation so he should be that model in our lives he sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be our goal as to who is within our hearts so there is something that that we need to ask ourselves every day is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our hearts or is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our daily lives in our actions uh, are we following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam interestingly one of the uh, tafsir of Imam Al-Qurtubi, he mentioned that in the ayah of uh, the verse in uh, in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ So, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you were to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say to them, Uh, if you were to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me. Fattabi'uni. Yuhbibkumullah. In the tafsir of Imam Al-Qurtubi, he mentions that uh, one of the uh, explanation of the verse, he said that uh, Sahal bin Abdullah, I, I believe it's uh, At-Tustari. So Sahal bin Abdullah said, Min alamati, ataupun uh, alamatu hubbillah. Uh, one of the indications or the signs of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we know that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so there are signs and indications as to where our heart is so is our heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we know that uh, one one way to indicate that as a sign he said that alamatu hubbillah hubbul quran if you are to know that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will love the quran al karim And then he he continues. Wa'alama tu hubbil Quran, hubbil Nabi saw. Sallam. And to know uh, that you love the Al Quran Al Karim is that you love the Prophet saw. Sallam. And then he continues. In and one of the indication to know that you love the Prophet saw. Sallam is that you follow his sunnah. Uh, so it is interesting to know. And he continues on and on. Ada banyak lagi lah. Uh, a few other uh, explanation, but I won't go there. But the important part is that we know that. By loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to love the Qur'an. And to know that if whether or not we love the Qur'an al-Karim, we, the indication is loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it has all these connections that whereby the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brings us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also how do we know that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our relationship with the Qur'an. Now, speaking of the Qur'an, Kalamullah, We have to understand the uh, the strong connection between Quran and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent down, or he was the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as to someone who brings the Quran, Kalamullah, from Allah to us. So, Al Quran is for us to recite. Al Quran is from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah. One of the prayers or supplications of Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam after which he has completed building or one would say rebuilding the Kaaba with his son Ismail alaihi salam alaihi salam there are a few supplications that he made so one of the supplications or dua that Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam made was what rabbana wab'ath fihim rasulan minhum yatslu alaihim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba 
wal hikmata wa yuzakkihim innaka antal azizul hakim so and also uh, sadaqallahu alazim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sometimes he mentioned that in 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 a hadith whereby he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that i am actually the answer of the prayers of ibrahim alaihi salam when ibrahim alaihi salam prayed for the goodness for everything the barakah of makkah al mukarramah as what we see today may allah taala grant us opportunities to visit inshallah nah, for both makkah and madinah we know that the uh, the prophet ibrahim alaihi salam he was the one who actually prayed that hopefully in the land of makkah which was then was not known uh, memang tempat yang tanah lapang lah sana kata eh uh, so when the uh, nabi nabi ibrahim alaihi salam he made this doa uh, allah subhanahu wa taala actually uh, made the doa into a reality whereby came a prophet for makkah particularly was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but more importantly what was in the supplication of nabi ibrahim he mentioned that uh, rasulan minhum yatslu alaihim he will be the one who will be reciting ayatika uh, the verses uh, the scripts from the quran in other words the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be teaching how to read or recite the verses of the quran karim to the people to his people which is the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam That is number one. Yes, do Allah him to recite tilawah. Number two, wa yu ali muhumul kitab, and he will be teaching what is within the Quran Karim. Ah, yu ali muhum, he will be teaching, or people would know we will have to understand what is the meaning behind every verse or behind the verses of the Quran Karim. Wal hikmah and wisdoms. Ah, some scholars mention that wisdom or uh, hikmah is sunnah. Uh, some would also say that it is actually to make tadabbur with the Quran Karim in other words to understand more about the verses from the Quran Karim why you zakki him and to purify them uh, why you zakki him some scholars like uh, Imam Ibn Kathir he said that it is to be to obey Allah Subhanahu wa taala and to always be sincere wal ikhlas so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent down mentioning or mention in this verse particularly in the doa of Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam yatslu alaihim ayatika to recite uh, to baca uh, to read the verses of uh, of the Quran al-Karim and wa yuallimuhumul kitab uh, do realize that he separates the two one is to recite we read and recite the verses of the Quran al-Karim wa yuallimuhumul kitab and to teach to make people understand so here comes the importance of our relationship with the Quran Karim whereby the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent down to teach us how to read and to understand uh, so it's actually a responsibility for us brothers and sisters a reminder to myself also that the Quran is not sent down for us to recite to be recited only without understanding we need to put effort It's the same similar effort when we recite and to understand uh, so we cannot just understand only without reading or reciting properly and the same goes when we are reciting we can we might be reciting perfectly but our efforts in trying to understand the Quran has to be the same in terms of our own initiative so yeah the Quran is being sent down for us to recite uh, what has been taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also for us to put in effort to find ways in understanding the verses of Quran for instance we, we might be we may be we may want to start with the uh, juz amma or the verses that we usually listen to like surah yasin so al baqarah maybe so hopefully that uh, with consistency we can understand al quran a lot a lot more uh, so the idea of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being sent down is to to teach us uh, for us to listen on the recitation of the Quran and for us to understand wal hikmah to understand with wisdom uh, with elaboration why you zakki him and this Quran or the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sorry the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being sent down to purify us uh, tazkiyah uh, this is also important part in our lives or in our understanding of of uh, our our religion there needs to be an effort for us to always purify ourselves 
uh, ultimately purifying is is to mean uh, we will always put an effort to find sincerity in our uh, actions in our daily lives so that is very important for us to understand that the prophet sallallahu was being sent down <coughs> was being sent down to bring the quran to us so yes let's ask ourselves once again how is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam close in our where is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our lives uh, so how do we go to that where is the quran in our lives may allah subhanahu wa grant us tawfiq and understanding always and istiqamah that is important for us to always uh, seek from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking istiqamah and seeking tawfiq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah grant us to uh, grant us facilitation in seeking allah so yes <clears throat> we have to understand that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent down to 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 distribute uh, to distribute this knowledge to distribute all what is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is actually the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to distribute distribute anything that comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sallallahu alaihi wasallam once mentioned in a hadith and this hadith is uh, being mentioned in imam al bukhari's uh, adabul mufrad he said May yuridillahu bi khairan yufaqqihu fid din whoever Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for him uh, he will be given knowledge and then the uh, continuation of the hadith what 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 did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, ana qasimun wallahu yu'ti i am the distributor and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the giver uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we see that whatever he brings from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala he shares with other people whatever is being taught from allah subhanahu wa taala he shares with other people uh, through his akhlaq through his knowledge every single thing and this is where the importance of understanding what aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha mentions when she was asked how was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam good character or akhlaq and know that aisha is the wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so people want to know how he was so salam in his home so aisha replied kana khuluquhu alquran his character or, or his good character is the quran alquran alkarim is his character what does that even mean it means that the prophet so salam any teachings found in the quran alkarim can be found in the prophet so salam's actions uh, whatever that is being recited or mentioned in the quran in terms of akhlaq it can be found in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is what we want ultimately when we recite the quran we want that the good actions come to us that is an indication that inshallah inshallah uh, that our recitation is being accepted and our recitation has blessings in it whereby we can see that after we recite the quran after that we understand the quran we want to do something about it and may allah taala facilitate us So that is important. Again, a responsibility for us, a reminder for myself, uh, uh, especially that we need to recite the Quran, we need to understand the Quran, but ultimately we need to uh, put into practice. Uh, put into practice. Uh, Hassan al Basri mentioned that uh, he once, uh, this is uh, mentioned in Tafsir, he once mentioned that. someone could have easily recite the quran from one end to another from surah an-nas sorry from surah al-fatiha to surah an-nas khatam but sadly you cannot see al-quran in his in his character and you cannot see al-quran in his actions nauzubillah uh, that is what we don't want someone who can it's a, it's a huge reminder actually uh, to 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 uh, to understand this Hasan Al Basri mentioned that it is, uh, in other words, it is a calamity for someone to actually recite the Quran to make khatam the Quran. Tak kisah berapa banyak lah. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times. But <clears throat> the most important part is to try your best. Of course, we are not perfect. To try your best uh, to put into effort in having Al Quran being seen in our uh, good actions and in our character. So. That is what we want, and that is how we try our best. Uh, we try our best to to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to really mean that we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Apart from us uh, claiming that we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through our lisan, 
through our sayings, through our du'as, through our salawat, which is something that is also important. We need to also put in an effort uh, to prove that our love for the Prophet Sallallahu is through this, through learning the Quran and through practicing it. So, yeah, this an important part of uh, at the point to show our love towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's good character. That is what we want. That is what is being taught. And that is one of the biggest reasons why he was sent. Uh, he was sent down to uh, to people and Allah SWT chose him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be amongst the people so that people can take him as the best example possible. Uh, the best example that we can get from a human being which is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Taala grant us love towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is actually the living example of the Quran. He is the light whereby he changes or transforms the hearts of people, not just changing in terms of the the external, the outward, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam changes people, especially those who are closest to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For instance, it is mentioned in some uh, books of Sirah that during the uh, war of Tabuk, uh, Sayyidina Uthman, he actually volunteered to sponsor for 10,000 men to prepare for the uh, upcoming battle of Tabuk. And then Sayyidina Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, offered to give half of everything that he has, half of his wealth. Uh, that is not little. Imagine us, we have 50,000, uh, just an, uh, as an example, we have $50,000. We give $25,000 lillahi ta'ala uh, without, uh, without hesitating. But the best part was, was Sayyidina Abu Bakar radiallahu ta'ala anhum, where he gave everything that he had. Uh, he gave every wealth that he had for Allah, for Rasulullah SAW. Why and how is this possible? It's because the Prophet SAW came down to transform people to these people who have hearts of gold. Uh, they are very rich uh, in terms of akhlaq. They do not care about the, the, the worldly pleasures. All they care was about, the, about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and his Rasulullah SAW. So it gives us the idea that the religion, <coughs> our religion, Islam, is actually uh, the religion of giving. Uh, if we see this, the Prophet Sallallahu he did not keep any wealth. He, distrib is, he distributed everything that he had. Even in terms of wealth, he gave to every, everyone that he had. And this was passed down to his Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Even when they became, became the Khulafa, they become the leaders of their own areas of their own within their own people. Uh, they did not really, they do not actually keep their own wealth, but they distribute, distribute or give it away as much as possible, as much as people need it. So if you think about it, Islam is actually the religion of giving. Uh, when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are giving time, we are giving our full attention, in making a praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in making zikr towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are giving part of us. When we, when, we speak, when we speak of giving, obviously it means that there needs to be some uh, part of sacrifice on our part. Uh, we need to make a little sacrifice uh, to, to, to make a giving or to give something. So yeah, when we pray, we give that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our time, uh, our energy uh, to make praise of Allah SWT. And when we see uh, the uh, <coughs> obligations of puasa, of uh, fasting, we see that why are we fasting? Why should we fast? Amongst it is to find the wisdom behind or to know, to understand the condition of those who are in need, the poor and the needy. We need to know, at least get the idea of their situation, of their daily lives through us fasting and holding our nafs from doing anything or from eating anything as we want. Why? So that we can do more, we can give more to these people so that we can think about uh, think about more things about them or to include them in our daily lives, to always help or think about these people. When we speak about zakat, obviously it is actually to help the, 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 the community 
as a whole needs to think about the poor and the needy. Uh, that is why it becomes an obligation. Zakat, be it zakat harta, zakat savings or other zakat, zakat fitrah or others. So it is actually for us to think more of uh, or the community as a whole needs to think more about the people around them, those who need most. Uh, the same goes for other ibadah like korban. And then we see like something when we do uh, something against what we are being told to do like kafara or something that we are not able to do like fidya or other things. Uh, we see that the penalty is actually to give food to others. So yes, this we have to realize that Islam is actually a religion of giving. That is how the Prophet ﷺ uh, or what the Prophet ﷺ taught to his sahaba, to the people around him. He did not change the whole uh, uh, buildings uh, or the infrastructures of Mecca and Medina, but he changed the, the hearts of the people, of the people around him, of the sahaba. And then came the tabi'in, 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 and, and so on. So yes, that was how the Prophet ﷺ is, uh, taught us and what we need to learn from the Prophet ﷺ that we need to give more in, uh, in order for us to earn more, which is to get closer to Allah and Rasulullah SAW, we need to give more, to make more services to others, to be in help for others. So this is what the Prophet SAW is actually trying to portray to others or to portray to us. Uh, let us think about the small sunnah of smiling. Why do people smile? Why are we uh, recommended to smile? What do we gain through smiling? For, to, making, to make others feeling, feel happier, uh, to make people feel a lot better uh, we give people that uh, that goodness that comes from the heart when we smile to others or especially to those who we do not know and then we uh, we give salam and then we, we we give them a smile what do we benefit what do we benefit uh, so it's about giving others that's the benefit the benefit is for us to always think about other people <clears throat> Okay, and then lastly, the first one was that the Prophet Sallallahu brought the Quran from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to us. So we need to understand that relationship that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran cannot be separated. When we think of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is the Quran, because he is the he is the one who brought the Quran, who taught the Quran to us until us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two is that. The akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu is the Quran itself for us to understand that we need to learn a lot about the Quran and then the, to always improvise or improve our akhlaq until we, we make Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu our best example. And number three <clears throat> is that we can always learn the sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu in the Quran. The best book of sirah is the Quran Al-Karim. You can find a lot of wisdoms hikmah, teachings, and understanding through the sirah or through the Quran al-Karim. Uh, we can even see in Surah Juz Amma, in Surah Al-Kafirun, uh, Surah Al-Kawthar. So these are the sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we need to uncover through reading. As we read the Quran, uh, we reflect on the meanings and we try our best to, uh, to know where or which part of the sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was this. Uh, when did it happen as much as possible lah. although at times we cannot get it 100% sure obviously but we try our best to at least get the idea of which seer or uh, what happened during that point of time so the seer of the prophet sallallahu is mentioned in the quran so <clears throat> this comes back to the question what should we do uh, what should we do as muslims uh, how do we gain our love or improve our love or extend our love towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one is for us to read and study the Quran. Uh, try your best to always read and study the Quran Al-Karim. So that hopefully this becomes a spark of this light that we will always continue to be in seeking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through the reading of the Quran. We need to have initiatives to always uh, find motivation, in fact, uh, to understand the Quran apart from reciting it uh, perfectly. That is very good. 
but we need to also understand how uh, this comes to number two try especially during our very particular time may Allah ta'ala uh, ease our affairs uh, during this COVID-19 uh, period attend online classes as much as possible uh, wherever that you can benefit you find uh, applicable and also uh, one of the uh, efforts being done is by Saudi Allah itself uh, so yeah may Allah ta'ala bless their efforts uh, they have free online classes try as much as possible to attend uh, to to go live or the recorded videos these are very important things to keep us motivated whereby nowadays it is not as easy for us to attend for religious classes and gatherings so that's the least that we can make do out of it uh, which is to attend online classes and may Allah start like is our first and through these online classes hopefully it can spark or give us motivation to always be uh, in, in seeking or in search of the Quran Karim uh, in understanding the Quran in understand our religion uh, so yeah it is important for us to uh, do our best and make the best of this nema of internet or social media it is a big responsibility whenever we are given privilege of something there comes a responsibility so internet is a huge nema from Allah Ta'ala it can be a nema can be a nikma so yeah this is a, a good opportunity for us to always benefit it uh, as much as possible. Do not use it to always uh, waste our time uh, or use it for unbeneficial things. And may Allah Ta'ala grant us tawfiq. And number three, make abundance amount of salawat. Uh, always remind yourself of the Prophet Wasallam through salawat. Whereby the Prophet Wasallam mentioned, and this has been mentioned in a lot of hadith amongst it is Riyadu Salin. Uh, man salla alayya salatan whoever makes salawat upon me one time salatan sallallahu alayhi ashran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will think of him and give rahmat to him uh, the, the salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that we receive Allah's love and mercy uh, when it is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes salawat it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes salawat to us but he's showing uh, love and mercy and his rahmah towards us Ten times, tenfold. When we make one time, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, the, the goodness will come to us tenfold. So imagine when we recite the salawat ten times. What more when we recite it hundred times or one thousand times. Uh, so obviously the goodness will come to us. And hopefully that we can do it on a daily basis. It doesn't matter if it's small. Hopefully that it is uh, consistent. Uh, it is consistent even though it is small uh, put it that we recite salawat 10 times a day but we do it every single day uh, so there is something that is very good then hopefully after that we can improve and add in more salawat in our lives uh, and salawat becomes openings of all of the rahmat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we want to receive the rahmah the love and mercy of allah ta'ala make salawat upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma salli ala sayyidina Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin miftahi babi rahmatillah the key to opening the the doors of rahmat or doors of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned by uh, Imam Abdullah Alawi al-Haddad in his widul latif the uh, the ending part the salawat Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin miftah miftahi babi rahmatillah the key or the opener to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah uh, so yeah I hope that this very short session uh, we can benefit together inshallah the, the whole idea is for us to always keep ourselves motivated with the prophet sallallahu how do we do so is through reciting the quran it might be a lot but always start with the quran uh, and then we have other zikrs obviously we have to do both uh, we have uh, and the best form of zikr of remembrance is obviously al quran karim with understanding uh, with presence that is very important hoping that uh, by us reading the quran it makes us closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it makes us closer to the prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam as we mentioned just now al quran and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cannot be separated uh, it is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually brought to us and hoping that by reciting the quran it changes us that is what we want uh, when we recite the quran it changes us 
We do not want the recitation of the Quran does, does not change us to be better always. Uh, we do not want to be stagnant as Muslims. We stay as it is and we want it this way until the end of time. No, We want to always progress in terms of our relationship with Allah and our relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. So I think that is <coughs> uh, what we can share today, hopefully or tonight. Uh, hopefully it benefits us. InshaAllah. I believe uh, Brother Abang Khalid, do we have any questions or anything? Apologies for any shortcomings, mashallah. No, mashallah. We learned so much from you today. Subhanallah. May Allah preserve you and may Allah increase your knowledge, your health, so that we continue to benefit from your knowledge and your guidance, mashallah. I have a few questions here, Ustaz. Uh, Ustaz, uh, first question is, Ustaz, is it true that uh, some ulama said that uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the heart of the Quran. So how, what does it just, uh, how does, do we know that he is the heart of the Quran and how do we connect to him while we were reading Quran? Yeah. Is that the question or do you have any other questions? Uh, there are a few more questions. I'll give you first. Uh. It's loaded. Uh. Loaded. Maybe I can have two or three questions. Two lah, two questions. Okay, yeah. two questions. Another yeah. question is, uh, we start uh, for us to memorize uh, the Quran. We always try to go with uh, Surah Baqarah first, and then later other followed by the tertib lah. Usually people do, but these people they are very uh, fluent or they are used to it. But for us the beginner, uh, I sometimes felt that uh, Surah Baqarah is very heavy. Uh, what do you advise for me? These two. Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. So the first question is in regards with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the heart of the Quran. Yeah. I think that's what we have mentioned just now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is actually the one who has brought the Quran al Karim mm. and everything revolves around what happens around him. Even the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and as mentioned by our teachers, is actually uh, the uh, uh, the best book of Sirah is the is the Quran Al Karim. We need to learn the Quran for us to understand more of the of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of what he has went through, of his struggles, uh, so of how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala elevates his maqam uh, in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So in terms of Sirah, it is actually quite uh, complete. Uh, in in the terms that everything that we need to know of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the Quran Karim. Yeah. Uh, for instance, in the Surah uh, Al Kawthar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala elevates him, even though that when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a, a son who died, I think it was Abdullah, uh, who died in in that particular Surah, the Tafsir men, uh, mentioned that uh, he was actually uh, laughed. Well, the people of Quraysh was actually happy on the uh, death of his son. So that was not something that was easy for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we decide on this surah, very short surah, maybe our favorite favorite surah, eh? Surah Al-Kawthar, Inna Aqtana Al-Kawthar, uh, Inna Shani Akahu Al-Abtar, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is protecting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is elevating him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, he uh, or the people of Quraysh who are actually being cut off from the Prophet or for, 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 for eternity. Uh, they are actually being cut off. They are the ones who are being cut off instead of them saying that the Prophet is being cut off. Why? Because there are no more. Uh, he has no more sons in his life. So whatever that he, he brings in this world or through the, the community of Quraysh, uh, they will not see a continuation. So they were actually happy about it, even though it was about the death of one of his sons. Uh, so this teaches us that the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, is in the Quran and as and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always elevate him ﷺ, uh, throughout his journey, uh, before his nubuwa or after his nubuwa. So yeah. Inshallah. And the second question about memorization, I believe it is... It doesn't matter. In fact, it is mentioned in uh, Imam An-Nawawi's uh, 
tibian that it is permissible to recite the Quran from back to the front. So especially when it comes to ta'lim and for 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 starters lah. Uh, for starters, so it is okay to always memorize from the back to the front. Uh, for instance, surah any surah that we feel comfortable with, we can start with that. Uh, maybe surah An Nas, then uh, Allah Al Masad, and then An Nasr, and so on. So yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to start with Al Fatiha, and the second one is Al Baqarah. I know it's not easy lah to us to for us to immediately uh, start with memorizing surah Al Baqarah. So yeah. It's, it's okay, inshallah. Mashallah, thank you, Ustaz. Uh, beautiful advice. Uh, the next two questions, I give you two questions. Uh, Ustaz, uh, can we be too greedy with our doa every day? I always doa, Rabbana atina fit dunya hasana. So the doa that Allah grants me what I wish and make it good for me because anything is possible through through Him. Yeah. Uh, there is lagi. Continue. Hmm. Does this doa contradict destiny, destiny or istihara? No. Masha'Allah. So the first question is, or the question is actually good, and the doa or supplication mentioned in the Quran is so is actually a very important and always being taught by the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi being recited by the Prophet Sallallahu Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Uh, that is the second most important part of the uh, of the prayer. In fact, the verse before mentioning the people of uh, Mushrikun or the Jahiliyyah before the coming of Islam, when they pray, it is mentioned in Tafsir that when they come to Kaaba, when they make prayers or supplication to their gods, they would actually uh, pray for anything that is good for them in this dunya and the stocks there. But along came the Prophet Sallallahu to teach us that we, we can always seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is best for us to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first in any, our, in any affairs, in worldly affairs, in the akhirah affairs. So the best way is to recite or to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for anything that is good in this world and the next. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wafil akhirati hasana. We need to make mention of wafil akhirati hasana with the presence of our hearts that we really want the goodness in the akhirah. More often than not, uh, that, uh, at times we tend to seek Allah Taala for worldly matters only. So it is okay, but don't forget on the akhirah matters. That is what matters most. That is, that is what makes us Muslims that we believe in the akhirah, and we know that we have a reward or we need, especially we need a doa, and we need Allah's rahmah or mercy, especially in the akhirah. Uh, so we need goodness in both worlds, in this world and the next. Okay. So the next, the continuation question is, uh, what does, was it? It, does it contradict uh, your destiny or your istiara that you do when you do all for this? So ultimately, in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything has been known, but the prayer can always change course to a better one with the ijtihad or with the effort of our dua. So we might not know that our uh, our dua might just change its course uh, with our efforts. So yeah, a dua is a part of our efforts. So ultimately, of course, everything is within Allah's knowledge. But through our efforts in making that dua, it might just change the course lah. So Allah Ta'ala Alam and Allah knows best. Uh, it is part of our uh, usaha or our initiative to always do more, lah, inshallah. And hopefully Allah accepts that and Amen. change its course. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Inshallah, Ustaz. Beautiful. Uh, the next question, Ustaz, is someone who has been regularly attending Maulud every year mm -hmm. uh, at the mosque and so on. But this year, due to pandemic, um, we didn't have the chance. Mm. Allah, I mean, Allah knows best, as you mentioned. Allah yeah. knows everything. So this person is saying that uh, he, she, he, she feel mm -hmm. down because uh, not able to attend the majlis and partly also because uh, she's not a good reader of Maulud and she don't have much friends like to go Zoom and all that. So she always like, if there is a majlis only, she see live uh, uh, Maulud. So she feel yeah. like yeah. the aura oh, or the ambience of the majlis is mm -hmm. missing. So what's your advice for her? The uh, 
the advice would be that we need to accept that this is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So don't this don't use this as a reason for us to not uh, attend or be motivated uh, with uh, attending events or maulids, even though it is online. I believe we understand this lah. Uh, that the the whole idea of maulid and the whole uh, baraka of the of the uh, the gathering obviously it's there lah when we are together but hopefully uh, this is what allah has given us so we need to accept it is uh, as an example another example someone who is not uh, who who does not afford to go to umrah to do haji or to do umrah to go to mecca or madinah it does not stop someone from uh, being in the presence of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so yeah we need to work it work more on ourselves or to have a more tighter relationship in fact this is one of the ways that we can spend more time uh, in learning so this is the important part of seeking knowledge even though it is online we feel that the feeling the feel the ambience is different obviously even for myself as i am speaking right now with a camera it's not easy <laughs> But we have to make do with whatever that Allah SWT gives us and we do our best insyaAllah. Uh, that's the whole part of us accepting what Allah SWT is giving us and we do what's best or what we can do as much as possible. Hopefully with that, the barakah comes in that we can uh, have more love towards the Prophet SAW and may this be something that is temporary. Hopefully in the future, Allah SWT may ease our affairs and things hopefully can can get back to normal insyaAllah. Amen, so yeah, insyaAllah. Insya so this is the last question. InsyaAllah. Uh, it's about, we're talking about the Prophet SAW character, adab, akhlaq. So what if we realize that we are the opposite of the Prophet SAW akhlaq, despite that we read Quran, zikir and so on. How do we persevere? Uh, to change that negativity into positivity. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I don't quite. He said that uh, yeah. this brother was saying that hmm. uh, despite that he was reading Quran and uh, Maulud and so mm -hmm. on, uh, we know that the Prophet uh, is best known for his character hmm. and his manners. And a lot of scholars also said that to know if we are with the Prophet if our heart is the prophet is our character also so what mm -hmm. if we discover that our character has been the opposite of what prophet uh, is? Mm. so how do we deal with it how do we turn negative to positive as in how do mm -hmm. we your yeah. to change ourselves yeah. Yeah. i think this is Bismillah Malik, this is being mentioned by our teachers that whatever that we want to achieve there needs to be a little bit or a lot of struggle <laughs> so we need to have a little struggle with ourselves uh, or a lot of struggle with ourselves depending on our capabilities so nak kita nak we need to go through that phase that in order to become the prophet sallallahu know this and this is a good reminder for myself when he teaches us about patience when the prophet sallallahu alaihi teaches us about uh, rida when the prophet sallallahu alaihi teaches us about good akhlaq know that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually endured more than us he actually uh, throughout his life had to bury six of his children so sallallahu alaihi wasallam so yeah he had to witness a lot of deaths in his life sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it is not something that is easy what he has went through sallallahu alaihi wasallam especially when he publicly invited the people of quraish and how they treated him sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, with their mocking, jesting, and other things. Even so, he so salam, was actually spitted on his face. So that is not something that is easy. So in other words, the seerah, the whole idea of seerah or, or the whole uh, seerah of the Prophet salam, is actually for us to understand there needs to be struggle uh, as to whatever that we want to achieve. For instance, if we want to achieve good akhlaq, we need to struggle. A good reminder for myself that we need to struggle ourselves to always be consistent, for instance, uh, to be consistent with our zikr, with our remembrance. This is how we fight our ego every now and then to always have uh, istiqamah in our uh, in our remembrance, in our zikr, in reciting the Quran. This is what comes up. Uh, good akhlaq. Uh, good akhlaq comes up through our 
uh, perseverance and through our struggle insyaallah uh, insyaallah may allah grant us facilitation Amin. for us to do more insyaallah so Amin. yeah thank you ustaz so, insyaallah thank you so much Yeah, yeah. Ustaz, with this uh, we end tonight online lecture. Thank you very much for thank you so much for being part me. of our program. Uh, thank you, your so baraka, much. your knowledge, mashallah. Uh, we hope to work with you again soon, mashallah. Uh, Ustaz, before we end the night uh, on this blessed night, Rabi Awal, mashallah, mm-hmm. two more days to travel Rabi Awal. Uh, we mm-hmm. need your doa for the closing. Mashallah. I actually have a doa. I believe you know lah. A doa from. Uh, Dalla ilil khairat, insyaallah. Ah, uh, one part of it lah. So yeah, hopefully we can study it together, insyaallah. But it's in Arabic lah, so it's okay lah. Okay, it's okay. okay. No problem. Okay. Alhamdulillahi wa alaikum wa shaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jamiin. Allahumma j'alna mimman lazima millata nabiyyika sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa 'azzama hurmatahu wa 'azza wa 'azza kalimatahu wa hafiza ahdahu wa dhimmatahu wa nasara hizbahu wa da'watahu wa kathara tabi'ihi wa firqatahu wa wafa zumratahu wa lam yukhalif sabilahu wa sunnatahu Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-istimsaka bi sunnatihi wa na'udhu bika min al-inhirafi amma ja'a bi اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك منه سيدنا محمد نبيك ورسولك صلى الله عليه وسلم امين ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه سيدنا محمد نبيك ورسولك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اعصمنا من شر الفتن وعافنا من جميع المحن واصلح منا ما ظهر وما بطن ونقي قلوبنا من الحقد والحسد ولا تجعل علينا تباعة لأحد اللهم إنا نسألك الأخذ بأحسن ما تعلم والترك لسيء ما تعلم ونسألك التكفل بالرزق والزهد في الكفاف والمخرج بالبيان من كل شبهة والفلج بالصواب في كل حجة والعدل في الغضب والرضا والتسليم لما يجري به القضاء والاقتصاد في الفقر والغنى والتواضع في القول والفعل والصدق في الجد والهزل اللهم انا لنا ذنوبا فيما بيننا وبينك وذنوبا فيما بيننا وبين خلقك اللهم ما كان لك منها فاغفره لنا وما كان منها لخلقك فتحمله عنا واغننا بفضلك انك واسع المغفره اللهم نور بالعلم قلوبنا واستعمل بطاعتك ابداننا وخلص من الفتن اسرارنا واشغل بالاعتبار افكارنا وقنا شر وساوس الشيطان واجرنا منه يا رحمن حتى لا يكون له عليها سلطان صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين تقبل الله منكم منا ومنكم تبارك الله كريم ثانك يو استاذ وانس جيت May Allah preserve you. We Amen. look forward to all your other programs also. Inshallah. And also working with you, inshallah. With this, I said, Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Assalamualaikum. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, inshallah. That's a very beautiful and also important uh, lecture with uh, Ustaz Najib Ahmad. May Allah preserve him. And uh, we're looking forward to work with him again soon. Inshallah, look out for his program under Masjid Taqwa or his own program, uh, Kafi. He has so many good programs. Inshallah. Uh, next, I'd like to inform you that this Wednesday we have uh, the Chaf Rabi Awal, the most important and blessed day of our life. Uh, we have going to have uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz Fedrix. We're talking about understanding the value of Maulud, right? And at the same time, check out our Sacred Power of Love, which will be 5th and 6th December. It's coming soon. Although it's online, uh, you can still uh, purchase at any time. Right? But we already start to sell the ticket now. Uh, it's two days, uh, 5th and 6th. You can check either. You can attend either one also, inshallah. Uh, check out our Facebook and Instagram for more details on the Sacred Power of Love. So with this, we say, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good night. May Allah bless our sleep uh, with the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.